Hello Makers, I'm Joe, and this is the Artillery Soundwinder X1, also known as Avnovo Soundwinder X1. And I'm gonna have to admit that it's probably one of my top favorites of the budget Chinese 3D printers that I have received so far in this channel. Stick around to find out why as I give you my review of the Sidewinder X1. Now a bit of a backstory, a few months ago a company called Artillery started spamming me and other creators in order to review the Sidewinder X1. This prompted me to ignore them completely as I was tired of all the emails that I was receiving until one day an issue arose on Facebook. Artillery had used Filament Frenzy's photos of his models he printed with other printers to promote the Sidewinder X1. This obviously didn't go down well with the community, Filament Frenzy called them out on Twitter Artillery 3D quickly removed the photos and sent Filament Frenzy a unit as an apology for him to test. Now while the situation wasn't ideal, the way they handled it was quite promising so I decided to reply to them and accept the review unit in order to give them a chance. A few months down the line and here we are. Now the Sidewinder X1 has a print volume of 300 by 300 by 400. It has dual Z-axis lead screws, a direct drive system with a Titan style extruder, and a volcano style hot end. It runs on an MKS Gen L board with interchangeable drivers, however it does come with TMC2208 style drivers which are manufactured by Artillery 3D themselves. It has a full color touchscreen display, a runout filament sensor and a power off resume function. The heat bed is AC powered and can quickly heat itself up to 80 degrees Celsius in under 2 minutes. The printer comes standard with a plain glass build plate, however I did install a wham bam flex base system on the printer simply because I find it much more convenient, especially with large build volume 3D printers. The only recommendation I give you here uh, is if you intend to ever install a wham bam flex base system uh, on any 3D printer, I would increase your bed temperature by around 10 degrees as you are adding quite a few layers now for the heat to go through so it needs to be compensated for. Now while the printer doesn't come with automated bed leveling, um, it does come with assisted auto bed leveling and I found that I never had to stay playing around with leveling after I set it up for the first time. The unit itself has a very clean look and was extremely easy to assemble which I had done during the live stream. The frame is assembled using 2040 aluminum extrusions all the way and that includes the x-axis. Wiring is very clean as it uses mostly ribbon cables. Now while there are doubts as to how long they will last, that is still to be seen. I, I used mine for about 800 hours on this machine so far and it hasn't missed a beat. Now when I got the printer the only noisy part uh, of it was actually the base fan, however Artillery have since updated this and made it much quieter. In fact, they had sent me the replacement parts to bring it up to the current version, which includes a redesigned bottom plate and silent fan, which is used instead of the one on the side, which is, was the noisy one. They also sent me the new heat bed screws, which are much bigger than the original ones and make it much more comfortable to set. They also sent me some spare ribbon cables and a spare thermistor. Now what about print quality? Well, I did say it was one of my favorites and that's mainly due to its print quality. Um, I ended up printing most of the models on this printer at 0.15mm layer height as I found it prints that layer height just perfectly. I, I mainly used Idea Maker as a slicer um, and then also Prusa Slicer as I'm trying to slowly transition away from Simplify 3D. I started off with Luby 3D's CAT which turned out absolutely great. It prints in several parts and then just assemble together. Now for the book cover, I used Filamentive's wood filament which printed without any issues whatsoever. I did have a couple of small issues at first. I was getting layer shifts. After the second failure, I diagnosed the problem as being an untainted grub screw on the Y axis. So all I needed to do was tighten that and once fixed, it was printing fine again. Following that, I used 3D Prima's Neon Rainbow Filament to print the Ferro Bust by Zane Rogers. Once again, printed at 0.15mm layer height and took around 100 hours to print. Results turned out truly awesome. The model itself has an insane amount of detail in it, so Zane done, has done an absolutely amazing job at modeling these busts. He has a huge collection of them on uh, my manufactory and you should definitely check them out. Um, they are an absolute joy to print. I then obviously decided to print a few other models of course, mostly in PLA as I was having too much fun. 
Breed by Art Creator was printed in filament of cosmic PLA blue, uh, which turned out once again amazing and it got the detail of the weave just perfectly. The layers were extremely consistent and seeing as the model uses pegs uh, to fit one part into another, the dimensional accuracy was spot on as they fit in just perfectly. I also printed Tormund from Game of Thrones and the Fallen Angel. Both models were designed by the awesome Wexter. If you don't know who he is, well, first of all, shame on you. Secondly, go check him out straight away. Um, both models printed absolutely incredibly good. Uh, Tormund was printed in Vanilla PLA by Prushamant and the Fallen Angel was printed in Alien 3D Ooze which uh, is a spool of filament I got when I went to Murph and it looks absolutely incredibly awesome. I then obviously tried a couple of other filament types like PEG and TPU just for the sake of making sure that they print without any issues. Now I printed a few more brackets in Prusa and PEG for my filament rolls which I'm hanging up slowly and also a few mobile stands for my daughter and her friends. I then also printed a few flexible bracelets in Filamentum's new Vertigo Grey Flexville. Um, I printed it a bit slowly even though it's a volcano hot end so it can take um, a bit higher speeds especially if it's a direct drive but you know force of habit I printed about 30 35 millimeters a second and they turned out just great. Now at some point I did have a small issue with this printer and that was after I had finished the, f uh, the episode I had done regarding printing in wood filament. I had let the filament sit in the hot end for quite a while and I got a, I got a clog in the nozzle so I decided to take it apart to clean it. After taking out the hot end I noticed that the heat break was a bit bent and even using my hands to slowly bend it back in place it snapped in half exposing how thin the walls were. Um, so I decided to upgrade to an original E3D Volcano hot end. This also helps a lot as the original hot end had the PTFE tube going down into the heat block which can be unsafe at high temperatures uh, but the E3D Volcano fixed this thanks to their heat break. Once installed it was good to go and I printed the Roadhog by Photos Mint in Spectrum Stone Age PLA filament. Now this was the first print uh, with the new hot end. I still hadn't calibrated the slicer or did any PID tuning. So it was more of a rough print, but you know, considering the quality was still quite good. Now the one main quarrel I had with this printer was its filament sensor. Since release, there has been um, several modifications uploaded uh, on Thingiverse to fix it. However, since I don't really rely on filament sensors, I simply opted to run a PTFE tube uh, through it in order to always hold it triggered and then just bypass it completely. All in all, I have to say I was very impressed with the Sidewinder X1. For a machine worth $400, it definitely gives you a lot of bang for your buck. It's, it's not perfect, far from it, but I think it's going to be hard to find something at this price point and this size that's going to perform better than this machine. There are very, very few things I would complain on about on this machine, uh, mainly the filament sensor as I found it unreliable. The touchscreen, um, while it works great, it sometimes gets buggy and mistakes one button for another when pressed, meaning that it might lose calibration. But other than those, everything worked as advertised. The ferro bust in fact was stopped midway due to a power outage. But once the uh, electricity came back, it just continued without any issues whatsoever and you can't even tell. And that is it for me guys. Thank you very much for watching. Um, disclaimer as always, Artillery 3D sent me this machine uh, for an unbiased review. No money has exchanged hands and every thought expressed in this video are my own based on this machine. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below. I will leave links to everything I printed in the video description along with where you can find yourself the Artillery Sandwider X1. Um, keep a lookout because there are some offers going on at the moment. And once again, thank you guys for watching. I want to thank my patrons for their support um, that enables me to continue doing what I love to do on this channel. Uh, make sure you like, share, subscribe, ring that bell for notification and as always, happy making guys.